Today's April 2nd, Microsoft just announced Windows Phone 8.1, the latest version of their mobile operating system. We got our hands on an early build of this OS. We're going to give you the full tour of it. Stay tuned. Here it is, everybody, Windows Phone 8.1. 18 months after Microsoft delivered the last major overhaul to the OS, it is here. As you can see, there's quite a few changes. We're going to give you a quick overview of what they are. Going to the lock screen itself, you can see actually some of the fonts and everything has changed. The extra core has not, but it is a little different. You also can see here this is running uh, on a Lumia 630, and so it does have virtual keys here at the bottom. That color is for the accent, and that can be changed in settings. Heading here to the start screen, and there's a lot going on. You can see there is a new start background, and here's the cool part, the parallax view. So as I scroll through, you can see sort of everything in the background stays still, and the windows sort of go over it. It's a transparency effect, and it's pretty neat. Uh, certain tiles don't have that because uh, it depends on if that tile matches your accents or not, uh, and developers can enable that under their own settings. You can see the Windows Phone Central app here already has it built in, so it works fluidly with it. Up here at the top, you got your little notifications. I don't have a SIM in this right now, but you can see I'm connected to Wi-Fi. And you see that little envelope up there. That is for the new notification center. You can see actually I have an email waiting. Let's bring down a notifica notification center. You just swipe down and there you go. Windows Phone 8.1 is here. And this gives you your quick access to various settings here. You can see anything you want for your uh, alerts and notifications here, and you can swipe them away and they disappear. You can also have a quick jump here to all settings, and you can access this from any screen. Now, what's really interesting here is you notice here at the top, you can see the date and your battery percentage. Uh, that only shows, of course, when you're on a notification center. I think it's a really elegant and smooth looking uh, effect because you don't want to have this all messy when you're just looking at your screen, but you want more detail, there you go. You got your full battery percentage and your full date there. These here are quick toggles. Uh, the Lumi 630 doesn't actually have an ambient light sensor, so this is actually very useful. I can just tap and alter my brightness to my desired setting. Uh, and that is fully configurable, so you can actually go into the settings here and you can go and configure this section. So here are your quick actions, and you can see I can go to brightness. And you can see all the choices I have. Airplane mode, toggle it on and off, Bluetooth, brightness, camera, internet sharing, location, project my screen, quiet hours, rotation lock, VPN, and Wi-Fi. And yes, of course, VPN is built into Windows Phone 8.1, a uh, long overdue feature. Uh, location, you could just basically toggle on and off if you don't want to share your location with the operating system. And of course, internet sharing and camera is really good, especially in this device, since there is actually no dedicated camera button. So that may actually prove to be useful. So you have four slots there, and you can put anything you want. Down here, you can see individual settings for apps. So here's Instagram. I can actually go into that. And look at this. So you can control individual settings for it. Do If I want to get an alert, I can have it vibrate or not. I can actually change the sound here to whatever I want. It comes preloaded with certain alerts, but of course, connected up to your PC, you can add your own uh, notifications there. And you can choose of whether or not you want notification banners, aka the toast notifications that pop down. And you can also decide if you want that to even show at a notification center. Full user control, it's really, really nice. You can see there are quite a few uh, apps here and more will come online as Windows Phone 8.1 apps come to the store. But you can do it for all things here, phone, Skype, store, because even the store can give you notifications now, which is really nice. Going back to the main screen here, and now if you don't like the start background stuff, we can just hop into settings here and start theme. And you can see here, you got that feature and you can do choose photos or just hit remove and this will go back now to your standard um, accent colors. Uh, and you don't have any more choices with that. There is no color picker. You still have the same ones from 8.0, but you can do a lot more with this. You can go into backgrounds and you can choose any image you want and basically set that as your start screen. And there you go. I happen to like this feature a lot, but not everybody does. Likewise, if you scroll down here, you're going to see on devices with four and a half inch screens or larger, you can now toggle this and it'll give you more tiles on your screen. Basically shrinks everything down. You see I got the space here now and I could just move things 
to their position. And you can see that background image stays static. Uh, and so it's sort of like a jigsaw puzzle where everything just moves around. And it's really kind of neat. But if you don't like that, you just go back into settings, toggle it back, and now you go back to the standard look. You're probably already looking at Cortana. We'll quickly show you that. We're going to do a little bit more in depth with Cortana though, since it is a very robust app. You can see it's getting things ready. And that is what it looks like. It is delivering to me personalized news. Uh, that's because you can go into the settings here and you can pick your own interests. You have remind me, quiet hours, places, music searches. So it does the uh, music ID feature, which you can access just by here. And it's going to listen to any music. You notice Cortana really isn't saying much. I'm not really sure if in the final build uh, there'll actually be voice there. It does talk. For instance, I can say this. Find me the nearest Starbucks. I found Starbucks at 1100 Union Street, Roche Brothers, Westboro number 119 in Westboro. It's about five miles away. <laughs> And so that is basically sort of how it works. It does talk in that sense, but she is not so interactive as much as, say, Siri. But we'll go more to that a little bit later. But you can do all sorts of things here, search for anything. You can also access Cortana at any time just by tapping the search key, and it goes right into it. Um, there is no longer a hold of the start key to launch the voice system as search is taken over. I really do like the icon effect there of it circling. The, it's only like a breathing, it's alive kind of thing. So that's really nice. You can see the me tile here, very familiar. Not much has changed there. You do have post and update and check in. And look at that, Facebook is there. For those of you guys concerned that Facebook won't be integrated into 8.1, I can tell you it is. It's just a bit different though. Uh, for instance, when I hit post and update, you'll see what happens. It goes into the app directly. It's actually really cool. This allows Microsoft to update Facebook with more features dynamically as opposed to just tying it to the OS. So I can just quickly post an update and it's very easy how it ties in. Likewise for check-ins. However, say you use Twitter, you can go into settings and you can see this is a new function here. You can actually set a default app for your updates and for check-ins. So I can do either or or mix and match. And you also see get apps here. When I tap that, it's just gonna show me Facebook because that's all there is right now. But developers will be able to tie into 8.1 with this feature and you can, you know, Foursquare would be a good candidate to put in for check-ins. So you'll be able to put Foursquare in there and it's kind of cool. You can just hit check-in and it'll pull up your location. Uh, you give it permission, of course, and it'll tell you where you are and just quickly uh, check in. So the integration stuff is still here. It's just a little bit different. I actually like it. The downside here is of course you can't uh, post multiple updates across networks. So that's the one change. Other than that, going to what's new, you can still pull in your Twitter and Facebook stream. So that is all here, which is really nice. And then you go back to share. Going to the screen here, you can also see Cortana allows you to pin individual stuff nearby. So I could do my weather and it just brings on the weather. So I can always have quick access to that in case I don't want to use the actual weather app. I can just do that. It'll also give me weather alerts too if those are there. You can also do headline news and you can pin all sorts of stuff through Cortana. It's up to you. And these are of course fully resizable to whatever you want, which is kind of nice. Skype is there. Uh, it is still a separate app. It's the same app as basically you guys are used to. Uh, same thing with the Facebook app. It's very much the same, just a little bit optimized for Windows Phone 8.1. Going down the list here, we have a few other updated items. You can see music and video are now separate apps, which is really nice. If we launch into video, it'll sign into your account. And if you have media that you purchased, it of course will bring that down. I'm now signed in and here is my collection. Uh, and you can see basically it pulls down your movies. You can hit see all and it's going to bring down everything. And now I can actually play this on the phone. Video quality is pretty good. You got your full list there, your Rotten Tomato score. And we'll hit play and see if that loads up. And what's really cool, you can see the virtual keys have now shifted. One of the nice features of having virtual keys, you can do that kind of thing. And let's fast forward a bit. And there's your full video streaming, which is really nice. So you can watch your videos on the go, something that we've been wanting for a long time. Going back to the screen here, we can check out Xbox Music. 
Once again, nothing too different here. Uh, it is basically your same music app, but just refined for 8.1. You get your artists, your album, songs, collection, everything. If you purchase music before, it'll show up here. You can go to the store, browse around. You can go into settings. Music, show streaming in my music collection. Not much for options here. If you don't want to stream your music and see your cloud stuff, you can, of course, hide it, which we just did. Going to the screen here, uh, we've got games. The Games Hub has not changed too much, although they have refined some little things here. Uh, you can see it's going to bring down my avatar, which is sort of generic here. They have added a few icons as well and moved stuff around, so Xbox Smart Glass isn't here. Uh, you got your notifications, no game or turn requests, pick multiplayer, so that's familiar. Uh, and then you have your other things here. For some reason, the um, my collection isn't showing, but I'm going to tie that up to a... Uh, Chalk it up to a little bit bug. You can see I actually do have Rio installed here for uh, Angry Birds. Uh, remind me, this is just another Cortana screen that has been pinned. Going into the Photos Hub, and we can see that has been changed too. We got a new format. You have all your photos, which shows your most recent things. Scrolling over, albums, camera roll, save pictures, screenshots. You also have online, Facebook and OneDrive are built in, so you can pull down your Facebook photos directly. Same thing with OneDrive, you have quick access to it. And of course, favorites. I don't have anything in the camera roll, but hey, let's pull down the camera real quickly, and we can take a photo, and as you can see here, um, you got all new controls, including ISO and the different camera buttons. You can also switch to burst mode. It gives you a little warning that it's going to be low resolution. And, of course, video mode, and it switches to that red dot. I love how dynamic this is, of course. And then we just snap a photo, and it is done. It goes back, and you can see it there. And you also have, with that, the quick share button, edit, delete, and you can favorite. So that's also a different layout, much smarter, much more useful than the previous version. Uh, we'll go more to the camera app a little bit later as it too is pretty detailed. But now you can see it's put down my photo and with the current date, we're actually shooting a few days before, um, but you can see the photo is there, which is really nice. And you can do everything you want you know, with it for sharing, deletion, or whatever. Uh, going down here, Instagram beta, that's still the same Instagram app. It's not built in, though we just downloaded it from the store. And of course, Facebook, that's a new Facebook app for Windows Phone 8.1, although it is basically the same Facebook app you guys are familiar with as far as the beta goes. Uh, let's go into the store, which has also been radically changed here, and radically changed for the good. Uh, let's see if we can actually load up. There we go. So it pulls down. It's going to do store. Uh, you have your new featured and spotlight section. The layout here is definitely a little bit different. It's more about bringing apps to you that are really popular and that people are using. Big brand names, Minion Rush, WhatsApp, Chase Mobile. So it's obviously geared towards the new user who is looking for that big uh, banner app. Scrolling over, you have quick links, featured apps, featured games, top free games, top free or top free apps, top free games, new and rising. So all sorts of different categories, way to drill down. If you wanna know what the best games are right now, these are the top ones that are out there. Going into a game, of course, we can go into like say Minion Rush. You can see the app layout now is much different. You have the title, the score, a read more, which matches your, uh, matches your accent color. And now the screenshots are down here. And you can just tap them and they should load up and show you what the game looks like, of course. Uh, so that has been moved over. Going to reviews, you can see a much more detailed screen here with the actual breakdown of the uh, reviews that people have given as far as the stars. And then you can see and read individual reviews. If you find them useful or not, you can tap, tap yes or no. It's actually a very small uh, menu system, but it, it works. So if love it, love it, love it, I can say no, and then it goes, thanks for the feedback. And that's going to affect that ranking of the review. So if someone wrote a lot, um, that basically gives a lot of detail and you found useful, you can hit that. You can also then sort by most helpful, most recent, highest rated, lowest rated. Much more useful for finding uh, reviews on games. Uh, the detail screen, this was moved from the main pane before, and now it is over here. It gives you all the information, including the uh, last update. If you go into settings, you can see use my location. That's because it can recommend apps based on where you are. So if you're in the United States, in say Massachusetts, it may give you apps that are more geared for your region. Uh, you have your pen, suggestions. Here's a cool new section, app updates. So that's gonna basically show you where um, 
you know, do you want to update your apps automatically? It's familiar for you guys on Windows 8. Uh, and you can also restrict that to just over Wi-Fi, which is really useful. So it'll only update, say, when you're at home using your Wi-Fi, it won't use your data. And I can force check for updates. And that's what that screen looks like. So that is really nice. Likewise, you can go into downloads. You can see anything that's currently downloading. Likewise, you can go over here to the history screen, and this is really nice. This actually shows you things that I've updated in the background. Uh, you can actually still go back and see when they were updated and what version number they are. So there's like a record now of those updates. Uh, very welcome changes to the store. It should make it much, much more useful. Uh, and I don't think there's really too much else. You have your My Apps and Settings and Search, of course. So. Going over to this menu, uh, you can see here, this is sort of new, where it says Bing Food and Drink. I recently installed that app and it has a little new there. Uh, once again, to sort of remind you that, hey, you installed this. And that's actually a really useful feature because if you're installing apps, sometimes you forget about them. And so that's going to tell you that, hey, that is waiting there. Going through the menu list, not much has changed here. You still have your search key, uh, but there are no other uh, sorting abilities. You just have by alphabetical. Uh, you can see Battery Saver is now built in and it gets its own system. Here is usage. It's going to show you what is being used basically by your battery. And settings, battery life remaining, battery saver, and those are familiar to you guys who are already running uh, Windows Phone 8. Uh, scrolling down here, and you can see there aren't too many new apps. You have Cortana, of course, DataSense. It should be built in for a lot of phones. Facebook Messenger is not built in. It does come as a separate app, just like it does now. Uh, FM Radio gets its own separate category. They pulled it out of music and gave it its own slot here. That's really good because now it means, you know, I can pin it to the start screen, which it already is. And so I can get quick access to that, uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, here, here drive, here maps, here transit. I'd show you those. Right now the maps aren't completely online yet, so it actually works, but doesn't pull down the data. I could say it hasn't really changed too much so far though. Uh, maps, messaging, here's your office, OneDrive, OneNote, all, uh, in one spot, which is really good. You got Pandora, once again, not built in, and we just download that. Here's something new though, podcasts. A lot of you guys have been asking for greater podcast support, and that is here now. So you can see, ooh, look at that, the potential, how convenient. And so we can actually go through and pull down all our episodes, stream them, you can download them, whatever you want, it's up to you. Uh, you can also just go back to the screen here and you can uh, see your collection, audio, video. You can see I have one downloaded which is really cool. Uh, so I can use that for offline. If I want to find a podcast, uh, this is using Bing. You just type in what you're looking for and it'll pull it up. So for instance, I can do, let's say if Windows Weekly is on there. And there goes Windows Weekly. You can see the MP3 version with the audio, all Twitch shows and it brings down all that information, which is really cool. If you bring down the podcast, you can hit play, you can subscribe to it, you can even share it with others. Microsoft is definitely refocused putting share into a lot of the menu systems now. You can even share, uh, if you find music in the store, you can now add that too. So I can hit share. And it'll bring up Outlook, Facebook, messaging, what other apps I have installed. It'll allow me to share that, which is really cool. Scrolling over, of course, brings on the episodes, and we can just start playing that stuff directly. So having podcasts built in is a huge bonus. So I can pin that to the start screen, too, for quick access. Same thing with individual shows. Going down here, Storage Sense pulled out of settings. A little bit easier to find. And now this has gotten a lot of um, updates. You can see the big thing there, SD card. We do have an 8 gig Class 10 card installed. Works beautifully. Beautifully. And scrolling down, you can see now store new music videos, podcasts, podcasts on the SD card. Of course, I can choose where I want that stored, but you put it to the SD card. You can already do that in Windows Phone 8, but 8.1 gives you more options. Store new photos on my SD card, store new apps on my SD card. So as you can see right there, we actually do have that selected. And the last few apps we've downloaded have installed to the SD card. We have not noticed any performance difference. It's completely seamless and flawless. You can also put new downloads there as well, and you can mix and match however you want. And you can see actually our SD card has 102 megabytes used out of the eight gigs. 
And so that is actually all apps and probably even a few photos at this point. And as you can see on a Lumia 630, where you don't have much internal memory, only about four gigs, uh, using this feature should be really, really good. You can put 64 gigs in there, possibly up to 128, giving you a lot more freedom. Now, one of the really cool features, and it's really subtle, so we're gonna show it to you guys, is if you go into any uh, messaging system where you gotta write something, you have your standard keyboard and your text prediction, no big deal. And the keyboard itself hasn't changed too much except for this. That is the new swipe feature and it is pretty awesome. It works just how you expect it. And look at that, even emoticons now pop up in text suggestions, which is really neat. And so I can add that in there as well and send that. And so it's as simple, you just drag your finger around to the word you want. Um, we'll just do keyboard. And I'm actually a little off on this. Let's see if it figures it out. And it still figures it out. So you don't even need to be completely precise. It still gives you what the expected word is and you can of course select it or just move on. So that's the new swipe keyboard. You don't need to enable it, it's built in. You just, you can type or swipe, it's up to you. It's just another way of uh, basically using the keyboard on the system and it's actually really good, especially if you're gonna use the phone one-handed, it makes it much easier. Finally, let me just show you the navigation bar here in the settings. Go down here and you can see, you can have always dark, match accent color, so now you can see it, it goes bright. There's match background, which doesn't change too much, and then always dark. So if you want it a lot more subtle, you can do that. If you do a screenshot, it'll only show the screen. It won't actually take a picture of the virtual keys. Speaking of screenshots, to do that, it is now power and volume up. And that matches Windows 8 exactly. That's why they did it to basically get a parity between the two. So that's our quick tour of Windows Phone 8.1. But there is so much more to this operating system that we can't possibly cover it all in one video. So we're gonna have some deep dives into some other features like Cortana, the notification center, and the camera. So make sure you head to Windows Phone Central to see all those videos and our write-ups on this operating system. Take care, everybody.